Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1304. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the emergence of the real estate bubble and how it is underway. Now, if you've been following the podcast for any length of time, you know that we've been talking about this for quite a while. And I've been saying that interest rates peaked in 2023 and would be coming down into 2024, fueling another real estate bubble. We're looking for crazy real estate activity for the next couple of years. Now, before I go into why and how that's all going to unfold, let's review where we've been. Of course, during the pandemic, the Fed told us that inflation would be transitory. But meanwhile, a war was started and a particular country was sanctioned by the United States, which led to higher oil prices. The higher oil prices moved through the economy, causing massive inflation. And the Fed, as a result, started raising rates. From March 17th of 2022, with a 25 basis point hike, then increasing in May of 2022 to a half a percent hike, then in June of 2022 to three quarters of a percent hike, as well as another three quarters in July, and another three quarters in September, and another three quarters in November of 2022 thus causing havoc with the stock market as well as the real estate market and the bond market. From there, the Fed increased half a percent in December of 2022, and from thereafter went back to quarter percent hikes in February of 23, March of 23, May of 23, and July of 23, each of those months having a quarter percent hike, followed by no hike in December of 2023 where the Fed basically said, we're going to wait and see what happens. The numbers are looking better. Inflation has come down quite a bit. We don't think we need to hike anymore. That's when the stock market really took off, had its best November ever in history, which was November of 23, into the end of the year. And then we started off rocky this year in January as some of those gains were consolidated and the market was choppy. But then the S&P 500 did hit new all-time highs. So where are we now and what are markets telling us? Well, in spite of people saying recession, recession, recession the last couple of years, we never saw a recession. And in my last podcast, I talked with you about why a soft landing is looking very realistic. Also, other experts were saying real estate crash. This is the end of the real estate market. And they were predicting that housing prices were going to drop by 30% or more in 2022 and in 2023 neither of which happened. Conversely, I've been saying once interest rates leveled off, they would start to decline. And that's what happened in 2023 when the futures market started anticipating the Fed stopping the raising of rates and the futures market started pricing in much lower interest rates into 2024. Now, while the Fed may not cut rates in March, By some measures, the futures markets are saying the Fed may wait till June for its first rate cut. It doesn't really matter because in anticipation of rate cuts, interest rates will move down ahead of what the Fed does. And that's good news for real estate. And we're already seeing that in the December 2023 real estate numbers. U.S. pending home sales jumped 8.3% in December of 2023 compared to the month earlier. And that was its biggest monthly gain in more than three years, according to the National Association of Realtors. And that was much higher than they expected. They expected only a 1.5% increase in sales instead of an 8.3% jump in sales. And that was far above what happened in November of 2023, which was a decline of 0.3%. Also, the pending home sales index, which looks forward 
to indicate home sales based on contract signings was at the highest level in five months, at its largest monthly gain since June of 2020. Now, the National Association of Realtors is predicting a 13% increase in sales of existing homes in 2024 and another 15.8% increase in the number of homes sold in 2025. That's because they have projected lower interest rates for 2024 and 2025 as well. And it's my contention that when interest rates start to drop, People who want to buy homes are going to push up their decision to buy. And even if they aren't quite ready to buy, they're going to do everything possible to try to take advantage of lower interest rates when they present themselves. And that is going to cause a real estate frenzy because, again, we have limited inventory. And by some measures, we are short millions of homes and we need massive new construction to level out the demand and the supply. Sellers have been unwilling to sell because they don't want to buy a new home with high interest rates, and they're reluctant to give up the low interest rate mortgages that they currently are enjoying. But when interest rates drop to a lower level, more of those sellers are going to be willing to sell their homes because they can lock in a relatively low interest rate on their new home. So that will cause more inventory to come on the market, but it's still far below the demand for houses, which means I think we're going back to bidding wars again for the next couple of years. Now, it's also my contention that we're on the four-year election cycle and that 2022 will mark the low in the stock market for the entire decade of the 20s. That means the worst is behind us, in my opinion. And with interest rates coming down, it's going to help corporate profits. And that combined with artificial intelligence also having an impact on profitability through the rest of this decade. And in that four-year presidential election cycle, we're in the second best performing year, which is the election year. Last year being the best performing year or the third year of the cycle. Two years from now, that puts us in the worst year of the election cycle. So again, if we have inflation coming back in a couple years, interest rates reverting upward again, which is what I think we're going to experience, that could bring about the busting of the real estate bubble in a few years when interest rates are high again, climbing rapidly once again by the Fed, and we go through what we just went through in 2022 and 2023 again. So there's a window of opportunity here for people to make some important decisions. Even the National Association of Realtors Chief Economist Lawrence Yoon admits, quote, home sales are projected to rise significantly in each of the next two years as the market steadily returns to normal sales activity. That's exactly what I think as well. And even Barbara Corcoran has made some interesting comments along the same lines. Barbara Corcoran is best known for being on Shark Tank, but she made her money that allowed her to be on the show from the real estate business and from owning a real estate brokerage that she sold in 2001 for $66 million. Corcoran believes there's going to be a major increase in prices in the real estate market as soon as interest rates drop. She says, quote, the minute those interest rates come down, all hell's going to break loose and the prices are going to go through the roof. Right now, sellers are staying put, but they're not going to stay put if interest rates go down by two points. It's going to be a signal for everybody to come back out and buy like crazy, and the house prices will likely go up by 20%, she said. We could have COVID market all over again, end quote. That's exactly the same feeling I'm getting is that as interest rates come down, the real estate market frenzy is going to return for a couple more years because while we have an election year, interest rates will trend down and it will last for a year or two. But ultimately, interest rates will go up again and that is going to remove the punch bowl from the party. This is the time to really think hard and get your strategy aligned for what you're going to do in the next two to three years since most people's homes are their largest asset and this is something you really want to be planning for. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And while you're there, sign up for my weekly newsletter for more tips for your financial freedom. 
That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.